everybody, welcome back to Journey to VR. So this week is kind of cool. I'm gonna be showing you guys part one of a two-part demo, and we're gonna be talking about how we can take all that cool character-based workflow that we've been doing inside of Maya and get that over to Unity. Now, before we start, I wanna bring up two things that were um, happened last week, two cool things that happened last week. First is the announcement that Autodesk and Unity are working together to better um, integrate the collaboration between Unity, Max, and Maya. So basically getting data in and out of those applications into Unity is going to get better moving forward, which is something that's super cool that we can all be excited about. Second is the announcement that 17.2 came out. So if you guys are using Unity, you can obviously jump into 17.2. Tons of cool new features in there. Specifically one that we're gonna check out today a little bit is the integration of the Stingray PBS shader or the ability to get the Stingray PBS shader which is a physically based shader um, specifically designed for doing game-based workflows that comes with Max and Maya into Unity. So that's something that, that's really, really cool. And let's check that out. So what we've got here in my scene is um, a really pretty basic setup. I've got one directional light in my scene and almost all the objects have that Stingray PBS shader assigned to them. And you can see that as I you know, go to the back side of the dark side of this character, it actually has an ambient model built in. So it has sort of an IBL system built into that Stingray PBS shader, which is super, super cool. And there's a couple of pieces of geometry here that don't take advantage of that. And you can see that they're obviously not getting any, um, any ambient light on the back side. So what we wanna do is assign a Stingray shader onto those metal parts of the tools. And I'll walk you through the process of kind of dialing the look or feel of that, of that shader. So we'll jump over to our Hypershade window. And you can see that this has got basically just a standard Maya blend assigned to those tools. So what we want to do is get a Stingray shader just by hitting the tab key and starting to type that guy out. So with that Stingray shader in here, we're going to grab the faces that that Maya blends assign, attached to or assigned to and assign this new Stingray material to that. Now, as soon as we do that, if we look on the back side of these, you can see there's that sense of that ambient light. So if we look at what makes the Stingray, uh, Stingray shader up, it's really pretty straightforward. And this is the beauty of these physically based shaders. They can accurately represent a ton of different real world materials with very simple sliders. That's really the, the key is that it's, it's just super fast to dial it in. So what we want to do is we want to make that, that look like metal, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw that from a, a value of zero to a value of one. Now, as soon as we do that, you can see that the, it starts to look metallic as you would expect. And if we just start to drop that roughness down a little bit, we're going to get a little bit more reflections, a little bit tighter specular model but it starts to just look really, really cool. Now, obviously, if we wanted to map any of these, we have the ability to do that, normal maps, specular maps, roughness maps, things like that. And this is also where you can assign what the global textures are. So what is it using for the, the refraction model or what's it gonna use for the, the, the reflection model or the diffuse lighting model? So these are just some default files that ship with the Stingray shader. You can obviously pump in your own files there that match your game engine, but that is, that's it. It's really a really simple shader to work with but ultimately what it does is very sophisticated because it accurately represents the way, uh, the, way the light should work on, the, on your objects, which is super, super cool. So now that we've got that guy kind of done, what we want to do is we want to hop over here and start talking about getting animation data over to, um, over to Unity. So what we've got, if we just go ahead and jump back here, this is basically where we left our file off last time. So what we had is we had the original motion capture data on this dummy character and we mapped it onto or retargeted it onto this character's custom control rig. So if we grab, you know, something like his, uh, his his hips node here and jump over to the graph editor, you can see that all that information is just sample data that's been baked onto this custom control rig. And this custom control rig is ultimately driving those skinned joints through IK handles and constraints. So it's a really sophisticated rig, and that is ultimately what we need to get into the engine. So let's let's walk you through that process now and start start talking about it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ground plane and our sneaker and we're going to export this out to Unity. I have uh, my Unity project already set, so we'll just say send selection over and we'll call this something meaningful like environment or ENV. Um, and we'll just say export on that guy. So this is saving out an FBX file. And as soon as we jump over to the, uh, over to the engine here, you can see that it goes ahead and it brings it right in. So now if we drag and drop this into our, into our scene here, we want to get this to the origin. So if we just hit uh, zero, hit the tab key to jump over to the next cell. Here's a cool trick. Hit the enter key and it makes that cell active. So you can hit zero, tab, enter, zero. Um, just a little a little chip there to, uh, to make those cells active is the enter key. So we're going to go ahead and spin this light around, you know, something kind of like that looks kind of cool. And now the next thing that we want to do is get in our animation from our guy. So we'll jump back over here. We'll grab everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to send this over to Unity using that same command. So send selection. And this time what we're going to do is give it a name that's meaningful. We'll call it something like dudes. 
And we'll save that out. And we're gonna turn animation on. And we're gonna turn on deforming models and skins and blend shapes um, because my guy actually has blend shapes on him, which is uh, kind of cool that those come across. So if we jump back into Unity, you can see here it comes, brings everything in. It's going to ask me what I want to do with the normal maps. And obviously we're going to uh, say fix, which is something we saw in a previous demo. So we'll just go ahead and we'll do that. And now if we drag and drop our little guys into our scene, we want to zero these guys out. Um, and with that done, we can kind of zoom around here and we can see these guys. They look pretty cool. Now this is, this is really pretty interesting. If we jump into our materials here, and we'll grab one like the face material. You can see that it's brought in um, obviously the maps, the normal map, and it's set the roughness model up to um, to match the roughness model. The, the shader it switched to a roughness setup, which is what the Stingray PBS is. So it kind of matches that look and feel inside of the game engine. Um, really, really pretty awesome. So with that done, if we jump back over to our assets and we grab our little guys here, actually I've got a window set up laid out here that will show us uh, the preview of this. We kind of spin this around and hit play on this guy you can see that well what's happened here well some of the animation came across that's cool but our custom rig obviously wasn't able to translate over into unity and drive our character so that's not cool we wanted our little our little worker guy kind of moving around so how do we how do we handle that how do we fix that well we'll jump back into maya and what we need to do is we need to basically get that information onto the actual joints we need to bake that information onto the joints now a lot of people will bake directly inside of Maya by going to animation, selecting all the joints, and then saying keys, bake animation. I don't prefer to do it that way because then you've baked it into your master Maya file, which if you want to go back and make changes or revisions of the animation, you've got this baked data in there and it, it just gets kind of messy. So what I recommend doing is baking on export. There's actually an option in the exporter to say bake on export. So you can keep your, your Maya file nice and pure and clean and only bake onto those joints on the actual export. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We got to grab the objects that we want to send back across. We'll, we'll send them both again this time. We'll say export selection to uh, Unity. So we'll say send selection and we'll call it dudes to overwrite it. So it'll just kind of update inside of, the, inside of Unity. And this time we're going to turn on bake and that's going to, to handle the process for us. And I'm going to turn curve filter on also so that it'll go through and sort of look for keys that are really, really close to each other and essentially make just a key at the front and the end. So it, 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 it takes care of having a bunch of static channels and not having a bunch of dummy keys kind of hanging around there. Oops, I didn't say go. So let's say selection and dudes. Make sure that I hit export instead of close this time. So it goes through, it does its baking. If we jump back into, uh, into Unity, you can see that it's going to update. And just like that, it kind of comes across here. And if we hit play on this guy, we now have obviously our animation on, on everybody as you want it. So that is pretty much it for getting animation data over to Unity. You have to make sure you get it onto that actual skeleton. So that's basically it for the basics. Next week, I'm going to be doing a bit more advanced topic, kind of the same idea, but we're going to be working with multiple clips and using the time editor to do some revisions to animation and show you how we can kind of use the game exporter in a slightly different way. So thank you again so much for taking the time to watch us. Hope you guys are enjoying Journey to VR. If you're checking this out on Vimeo or on YouTube, make sure you go back to the area and go to the Journey to VR blog. On that blog, there's a lot of demos showing Autodesk tools, doing AR and VR workflows as well as game engines. And we also have some really cool written articles with thought leaders and our customers and clients about what they think is super cool with VR and AR. So make sure you go back there and check all that data out. Thanks again, everybody. Cheers.